Ah, uh, here we go, my friends, look at this. The 7th of November, 2015, and you are observing covert weather and climate modification, which is pretty blatant, really. Oh, wow. There you go. Ah! That's bad. <laughs> oh, my word. Look at that. Mick West and Contrail Science, you are bad dudes to try and debunk this obvious thing. This is just shocking. No, that is not a normal consequence of a jet plane just flying through the atmosphere. They don't even look the same as normal. That's a chemtrail, a real one too. Shit, that's terrible. Oh dear. This is part of a covert weather and climate modification program. They are now uh, deploying this type of technology all around the world and they are doing regional heating. They are deploying uh, chemicals into the atmosphere that facilitate crystal growth. They, uh, look at that, that's full on radiative forcing. This is technology designed to increase uh, temperatures by creating an atmospheric lens also with the crystal growth they can trap heat in ah oh, this is terrible they, they're altering cloud microphysics this is full on No question about it, my friends. Our governments are complicit. Many scientists know about these programs and they keep their mouths shut because they get a lot of funding. They've got uh, pressure, peer pressure, not to open their mouths. They know their careers could be ruined or even worse, they could be assassinated. This is being used to con the masses into believing that climate change, the threat of climate change, anthropogenic global warming is coming from CO2, the harmless but vital trace gas that gives all plants life. The, uh, the United Nations IPCC group are saying we need to remove carbon from our atmosphere. These guys are supposedly the world's top scientists. I'll say they're the world's top sellouts dealing in pseudoscience. This is blatant atmospheric chemistry. This is, we, we see these programs going on, yet there is no media coverage because the media is controlled. We approach the establishment with our claims that we believe that there is a uh, artificial generated contrail program contributing to climate change and we are laughed at we are lampooned as conspiracy theorists yet all you have to do is watch the skies and not for that long and you will begin to see why some people are waking up to this horrific manipulation of our environment and the social manipulation years and years of propaganda lies and deceit have been employed to generate this myth that co2 is responsible for climate change now get this there is just 0.0375 percent of co2 in our atmosphere now of that, there is a tiny percentage which is actually man-made. The majority, the vast majority of CO2 in our atmosphere comes from natural sources, from decomposing plant life, from the respiratory of living plants, from the respiration of living plants from volcano eruptions, from interactions with the sea. The sea doesn't just absorb CO2, it also releases CO2. There's a cycle there. 
Now what we are witnessing and documenting on a regular basis is a covert but blatant weather and modification program. This is global, this is involving airlines, not all airlines but some, a, a vast majority because they're all virtually owned by all the same banking groups now. Look at that, it just stopped and there's a the plane. But at that the trail we've just watched, that deployment, that obvious deployment. Now, the, of an of a artificial chemtrail, a contrail. Now, I've been reading papers from the 50s that understood that contrails alter the electrical and thermal dynamics of the atmosphere in which they're, they're created. We've got different types of contrails. We've got short dissipating contrails. We've got mid-length dissipating contrails. Then we start to get to persistent contrails, persistent spreading contrails, cirrus contrails, or contrail cirrus. And basically what's happening is these crystals, which apparently can have accelerated growth, um, are seeding cloud decks below when they fall. Um, they're, they're blocking out the sun, they're also trapping in heat. They're also apparently, because I can feel it, magnifying and intensifying the sun's radiation. Now that may be just simply because the ozone has been depleted. Now that was uh, talked about in uh, the Outline for Weather Control proposal written in 1945 by Vladimir Zwodakin for the United States Air Force. So, I mean, I'm trying to give you an example of the longevity of the interest in controlling the weather. Now, you've got people like J.J. Thompson, who was the head of the Royal Society over a hundred years ago, talking at a symposium in 1910 about the fact that it would only take a modest amount of electricity generated in the atmosphere for wide-scale weather modification. Now this was even understood about using directed energy for weather modification a hundred years earlier. In 1806 there was a book written by a man called John Williams. It was about climate change around Great Britain. Now towards the end of his book he talks about um, implementing a, a large array of antennas around the coastline of Britain to direct electrical energy into the atmosphere for the purposes of converting fog into clouds to facilitate rainfall. This is in 1806. Jump forward a hundred years to 1905 and you've got a, uh, an influential scientist, a physicist known as Oliver Joseph Lodge. This man um, had a patent to ionize the weather by directing negative electrical charges into the atmosphere, you could facilitate precipitation, you could make it rain. By directing positive energy into the atmosphere, and um, I'm talking about positive electric energy, you could dissipate clouds and uh, stop it from raining. This was widely understood 110 years ago. Many scientists are aware of this, but we don't really hear much about the electrical activities of the atmosphere in relation to climate change, do we? All we hear about is global is greenhouse gases and the effects of CO2, because CO2 is something that with radical measures, with far-reaching measures, you could potentially control, or at least you could affect control over humanity by telling them they have to limit their CO2 output, their dependency on CO2 through energy generation. A lot of CO2 uh, is a byproduct of us um, creating electricity or uh, using transport, be it flying planes or be it um, using ships or cars or whatever. CO2, we live in a carbon, uh, on a carbon-based life of planet. Everything releases CO2. Carbon hydrofuels. So they think that they can um, move us off of these fuels 
into renewable energy. Now, a lot of renewable energy I am completely in support of. Of course, I would like to break away from the dependency on the energy monopolies that the Rothschild uh, types have control of, of course. And of course, I would prefer um, to have um, a limited amount of pollution um, damaging our planet. I am on board with that, and who would not be on board with protecting our planet? But what we have to be aware of is the big con. The con of the 21st century is that man is responsible, everyday man, is responsible for climate change. What we're actually seeing is a massive covert program that is working on the long-term goal of weather and climate modification to con the masses. We are all being conned. Our governments are selling us down the road towards a one-world government, a totalitarian system of tyranny a scientific dictatorship such as the uh, the brave new world that Aldous Huxley talked about or the Orwellian nightmare of uh, George Orwell uh, and Big Brother in 1984 this is all planned transhumanism is an, a, a goal of governments they want technology in our bodies they want total monitoring of all life on this planet this, this is a reality. Yeah, I, I urge everybody to look into this. This is linked to climate change because all these different changes they want to bring about to society are based on the fear of climate change that man is responsible. Don't forget, we have been warmer many times before without all the catastrophes they try to frighten everybody with. We've been warmer in the Middle Ages. The medieval warm period was a warmer period than today. And they say, oh, but it's a regional effect. It only affected the Northern Hemisphere. Well, that's not true, because I've seen um, research into the effects of the medieval warm period in China. Um, so, you know, I don't know how, how much of the world they want to say is regional, but we're spreading right across it now. Um, so, no, I'm sorry. The medieval warm period was warmer. We didn't have all the catastrophes they're trying to frighten everyone with today. We don't actually have any global warming per se because satellite information now, which is more reliable than the, uh, the badly placed um, data um, collection places around the planet. Um, satellite data confirms we have had no global warming for 17 years. There's a hiatus, a pause, even though we're supposedly having an increase in these greenhouse gases, the temperature does not correlate. But what we do have is strategic targeted warming. We've, we're seeing atmospheric chemistry being altered. We are seeing um, the atmosphere being affected by electromagnetic frequencies, by lasers, by all kinds of different technologies that have been developed over decades and decades and decades for the sole purpose of learning to control